Hey everyone, today I'm showing off my Houdini Instancing Setup tool, which lets you take in a bunch of points and assign geometry to it to instance on it. Uh, it makes the whole process super easy with a simple UI, and also makes uh, it easy to create really dynamic assignment based on noise patterns and all kinds of other stuff. Um, so let's dive into it, and let me show you how to set it up. Now before being able to use this tool, you have to of course download and install it. And there's a link in the description to the GitHub page where you can also find instructions on how to install that. So go ahead and do that first. Uh, make sure to restart Houdini if you installed it, and then you can start using it. The way instancing in Houdini works is that you actually have to have each object that you want to instance as a separate object node. So um, you might already have that depending on if you've imported it. If not, you might have to split it out. Um, if you want to know some ways how to do that, let me know. Um, but yeah, so once you have a separate object node for each of your items that you want to instance, you can hide that. And then let's drop down an instance node. Um, and I'm actually going to scatter everything on this geometry I have here. So I'm just going to turn that on. I'm going to jump into the instance node. We can ignore this um, if that pops up for you. And then uh, I will do an object merge. And I will object merge my grid in. And then um, I'm going to drop down a scatter and a line. I'm going to crank set by density and really crank this. Let's do 100. Um, I'm also going to turn off under attributes the p scale because otherwise our uh, objects are going to be way too small. And then I'm going to drop down the instancing setup node. Now all you have to do to get this working is click bulk add geo, select the geometry nodes that you want to use as instances, jump back out. You won't see anything quite yet because you have to go in here under the instance node and turn on point instancing. Either one of these settings will work. I'm just going to use fast point instancing. I honestly don't really know what the difference is, um, so either one is really fine. As you can see, now our geometry is appearing on these instance points. Now let's go and tweak this a little bit more and play around with some of the settings. So um, if you dive in here, you can see that you can't see your instancing geometry. So uh, you can turn on the, uh, a preview, and that will kind of like color the points based on the different instances. But I find it much more helpful to just pin the viewport on the object level, and that way that stays as is. So now we can play here with the distribution. So first of all, you can change your random seed. Um, you can also use this ramp to change basically the distribution of the different uh, models based on the points. Um, you can also individually crank the chance that an object appears. So at zero, it wouldn't appear at all. And if you make this really high, like 500, most of them are going to be that object. Um, so that's based on a completely random distribution. Now we also have the mode to set it based on a noise pattern, and I really like this one. Um, and I think it lets you do some really cool stuff. You can change the offset. Um, you can just play with these values. You can change the noise pattern, which can result in really interesting things. Turn off the fractal element. You can do some like cool geometric patterns. Um, yeah, so there's all kinds of cool things you can do here. Um, again, the other settings will work as before. The third way of managing this is actually managing by yourself and having an attribute be controlling this. So let's try this out. Let's drop down an attribute at just float. And let's call this, um, let's call it distrib. And then let's select that attribute in here. And so now, if we change the attribute, you can see that the distribution changes. Now currently it's just doing one number for all of the points. And that's why it's currently changing all of the attributes, uh, all of the points to the same model. But if we change this to a noise, now we basically have the same thing as inside of the instancing setup, instancing setup itself, where we can change a noise pattern um, and do the same kind of things. But this gives us a lot more flexibility because for one, we could change it to something like radial, where it will do it in a circle, bounding box, or even do a completely custom setup. You don't have to use the attribute adjust float. 
And you can also, it lets you to stack these. So for example, the first one is a gradient and then we can do a noise. And now we can kind of like offset and distort the noise or the, distort the gradient to make it feel a little more natural. Maybe let's um, copy this parameter and paste it out to ref, oh, paste it out to reference, and make it negative. That way it kind of does it more so in a even way and then we can turn it down. So that way you still have some level of control, um, but um, yeah, so this lets you do all kinds of cool stuff and is really, really powerful. I imagine that you can tell at this point. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. You can add stuff down here. You can always, you know, remove objects, add more objects, uh, change the chance. Uh, you can even give it a custom preview color if you want to, uh, if you want to rely on these colors here. Um, if that's something that you're interested in. But uh, I really like just working on the objects level and pinning that. Um, so yeah. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, happy to help. And uh, let me know if you encounter any bugs or problems with it. Thank you.